I mean, it is exceptionally grim. So we did some large scale polling in May to see how people were doing. And we found that already about 7 million people were going without essentials. So going without food or being able to afford to have showers or toiletries, those kinds of things. So that's, you know, as many people as live in the whole of the north of England. And the other thing that we're hearing a lot about is debt. So more than 4 million people already in arrears with their bills. And they've got an average debt of about £1,600 already. And people getting into more debt, including high cost debt, to cover essential spending. So that is all before we see what's coming down the line this autumn. There's no doubt, Helen, that pr obviously we know prices are going up, our bills are going up. It can be a, a crippling to even fill the car with a tank of petrol for some families at the moment. But what we also have is a labour shortage. There are jobs available out there. Are there enough people keen enough to do jobs that they may not want to do to make a little more money? Well, with the labour market, one of the most concerning trends is we are seeing fewer people in the labour market. And a lot of that seems to be driven by more people with long term illness. So that's something that has really gone up a lot during the pandemic and it's continuing now. And there's probably a couple of things happening there. One is we know there are people with long COVID. So people who are suffering that kind of long term illness because of COVID. But we've also got the NHS backlog and we've got the NHS really struggling to treat all of those people. So you have an awful lot of people who many of whom would like to work, but they're currently too ill to work. On the other hand, you've also got some employers are now moving to more flexible work practices. Now, some of that could help as things go forward, but we do need to get to grips with why so many people are finding themselves in long term illness. And that's taking them out of our labour market because we need them. We need them back in the labour market. I, I agree with you. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people who have be, had um, treatment neglected during lockdowns, particularly serious illnesses, cancers and such. But I find the long COVID excuse pretty flimsy. I can't deny it. There's very little evidence to show that long COVID is causing people to stay off work. Um, so give me your response to that. I mean, I think the statistics from the health service shows that there are, it's in the thousands, kind of, I think it's over 100,000 people who've had long COVID. And it tends to be, you know, people are out for weeks or a couple of months. And obviously that fee doesn't mean you're out of the labor market forever, but it means you're out for a bit. But some of the other trends, I think, have started pre-pandemic and have been getting worse. Things like mental health. And that's one of the things, actually, when we've got the recession coming down the line, we know from previous recessions that the kind of hardship that's caused by recessions can then feed into people's mental health getting worse. And debt, there's a really close link between debt and those financial problems making your mental health worse. And once you get into having a, dif a difficulty with your mental health, you don't recover just like that. And we also know that within the health service, getting access to therapy, getting access to treatment for mental health is very hard, particularly if you're not yet at you know complete crisis point. So you've got this kind of confluence of things happening where we've got the economy nosediving, you've got prices going up, you've got debt rising, and you've already got more people experiencing things like mental health problems, which are going to be made worse. And you've got the NHS struggling to keep up. So I think it does all add up to a pretty grim year we've got ahead of us.